EVs are not going to make the cut at what, all. Where will the copper and the nickel and where, where, where will all that go? It'll be focused on the green techs that actually work in the geographic areas where it can be applied. So you put solar panels outside of Tucson, you put wind turbines outside of Tulsa. That works with the technology we have now. You do not put solar panels in Connecticut. That's stupid. That actually increases your carbon footprint. Because there's no sun. There's not enough sun to generate enough electricity to pay down the carbon debt that it took to build the stuff in the first place. All right, guys, so welcome back. Thank you for hanging out, spending a few moments here with me. If you're new, definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. Now, my dissatisfaction for EVs is very well documented on this channel. How can you trade the beautiful symphony Or just complete silence. I, I don't get it. I don't know how people can defend this. I've made videos pointing out so many different routes that we could go down, whether that's synthetic fueling, uh, hydrogen combustion, or fuel cell. There's a ton of different avenues that we can head down, and it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't have to be EVs. That being said, the industry seems as though they are getting forced into this. And, you know, my objections to EVs cover every everything from the infrastructure not being able to handle it, how much money it's going to end up costing in order for us to kind of keep up with the EV growth on a year-to-year -year basis, and then also to how long it takes for everybody to charge up. Not everybody has a house with a garage and they can put a, a an EV, you know, charge up area. A lot of people are in apartments. A lot of people are in areas that they don't have the capability of actually doing it. There is major drawbacks to EVs. And one of them is what's re actually required to make an EV, okay? And this is something I haven't thought about. So take a listen to this guy that was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He makes some pretty interesting points about EVs. And so there's no shortage of people in a room when I'm speaking who get really upset because they have an investment thesis or maybe they've bet their company on something that I just see as a non-issue. Uh, so, you know, obviously the folks in the crypto world um, have never liked me. And I dropped a video last night about how EVs are just a disaster that aren't going to be with us very much, very much longer. And I got some, I've gotten some interesting communications because of that one. So things like this happen with me with almost every presentation. And last year I gave 179 presentations. What, it, what is your perspective on EVs? Uh, they're not nearly as good on carbon as people think. Uh, most of the data that exists doesn't take into the fact that most of this stuff is processed in China where it's all coal driven and it doesn't take into effect, uh, effect the, um, I'm sorry, does not take into account the fact that most grids that they run on are also majority fossil fuels. And that extends the break even time for carbon from one year to either five or 10 based on what model you're talking on. Cybertruck's far worse than EVs. Uh, but the bigger problems, we're just not going to be able to make it much longer. If we really do want to electrify everything, that doesn't just mean EVs. That means the entire system that feeds into the EVs. We need twice as much copper and four times as much chromium and four times as much nickel and 10 times as much lithium and so on. We have never, ever in any decade in human history doubled the amount of a mainline material pr production in 10 years, ever. And we need all of this by 2030? No. It's just not technically possible. So how does the government, say, of California justify these mandates when they're saying something like, by 2035, all combustion vehicles mm -hmm. must stop being sold in the state of well, California? Let's put the ideology to the side, because I'm not even going to try to explain that. Uh, I will give a little bit of defense for California, though, because I do consider myself a green. I just think of myself as a green who can do math, so I don't get invited to any of the parties. Um, California's state legislature gives a lot of authority to their state bureaucracy. So the bureaucracy will set the goalpost. No ICEs by 2035. Knowing that the technology doesn't exist, knowing that the supply chains don't exist, but they will set the goalposts. If we get closer to that date, say 2027, and it's apparent that the technology is not proceeding at a pace that will allow that target to be reached, they have the authority already to move the goalposts. 
And they do this on clean air issues. They do this on toxicity. They've done it on nuclear power. They undoubtedly will end up doing it on EVs. So do you think it's one of those things where there's a bunch of green people who don't do the math? Oh, yeah. And it just sounds great. It, yeah. it falls in line with the progressive ideology. Mm -hmm. We need to, you know, carbon neutral. We can do this. Everyone go electric. Yeah, and there's going to be, well, there is a fascinating discussion happening in the environmental community right now because they're being confronted with reality. So California and Germany have very similar green tech policies, but the Germans have spent three times as much as California, but are only getting about a fifth as much power. Because I don't know if you've ever been to Germany, but the sun doesn't shine in Germany. And now with the Russians on the warpath and their clean-ish energy from natural gas going away, they're going back to lignite coal in force. It was already their number one source of power. Germany, the idea that Germany is green is ridiculous because they rely on really, really dirty coal and now especially so. Uh, but there's now a conversation going on between the German environmentalists and the Californian environmentalists about why California in relative terms is doing so well at this while Germany is not. And the answer is simple geography, but that's never been part of the conversation in the environmental community before. Now it is. They, they should have had this conversation 15, 20 years ago, but they're having it now. And as soon as they come to the conclusion, unwillingly, but they'll get there, that we have to choose where we put our copper and our lithium and our nickel, EVs are not going to make the cut at where, all. Where will the copper and the nickel and where, where, where will all that go? It'll be focused on the green techs that actually work in the geographic areas where it can be applied. So you put solar panels outside of Tucson, you put wind turbines outside of Tulsa. That works with the technology we have now. You do not put solar panels in Connecticut. That's stupid. That actually increases your carbon footprint. Because there's no sun. There's not enough sun to generate enough electricity to pay down the carbon debt that it took to build the stuff in the first place. I'm just a big believer that you should just let the let the market play out. If if you know half the population wants EVs, great. If half the population wants to continue with synthetic fueling to fuel up their, you know, their twin turbo inline 6 or their V8, they should be able to do that. And um I just don't see a fair playing field right now and it it's upsetting to me to watch it happen and play out. So Definitely go check out more of Joe Rogan's clips. He's pretty interesting. You know, he has a lot of really good guests on and he kind of lets them talk. And, and it's it's interesting to hear other people's points of views.